Hey guys, it's Erica and right now I'm in my backyard because I have two very large monsteras that I need to stake up because they're starting to get a little big without support. I staked one monster in a video and I repotted it and it's doing really well. So let me let me show you that. This is the monstera that I repotted in a video. I have it on this moss as you can see this monster is really strong because it's growing outdoors so as you can see it, it has bent this metal moss pole it's climbing up it though and it does have roots sticking in there so I really like it and I kind of move it around so that the leaves will kind of move around and it'll grow up the pole but I specifically bought this pole and I have another one so this is the pole, it's a totem pole, totem pole plant support and you're supposed to be able to kind of stack them. It has these two stabby things here to either put in soil or to kind of stack it onto the other pole. I actually need to do that so I need to buy another one but I got one of these to stake one of my other monsters. They're bigger than this one so here <laughs> Here's one of them. You can see it is crazy. Like its leaves are wild. These are my friends. So they were bought like this and you can see the leaves were messed up. But they've been with me for like a month now. And you can see this is the newest leaf, which is really massive and beautiful. So hopefully all the leaves will soon look like this and these will be fixed up. And here's the other one. And it's pretty much the same exact thing going on. Here's one of the newer leaves. It's still a bit broken. And then I also have this brand new one, which is looking really good. So yeah, they really need to be staked and I need to kind of position them so that they'll face the sun a certain way and all the leaves will be beautiful because right now it just looks like a great big mess. I also bought this kind of trellis Thing because I had been seeing the really large monsteras being sold they were all staked on a kind of a similar trellis to this one so I wanted to use this and I got this from Lowe's it was really cheap so I don't know if it's gonna hold since it folds that's kind of kind of suspicious too because I don't want it to buckle under the weight of the monstera but it's really tall which I like because um, the monsteras are really tall and then like i said the reason why i get the totem pole is because you can stack them on top of each other you can keep growing them i i don't really know how stable it would be so when i finally attach the second part to this one we can find out so i don't have any new pots for the two really large monsteras if i were to get a pot i would probably get the same one that this one has which is from Lowe's. It's plastic, so it's really light. The monsters are very heavy, so I don't really want to get like a clay pot because I have clay pots, but I do not want to have that heavy of a pot to carry around. I think I'm just gonna keep them in the pot. I want to try and stake them so that, like I don't really know if I'm gonna unpot them or what's going on, but we'll see. First of all, before we get started, I need to soak this moss pole. When you take this out, you kind of need to soak it. I don't think it says on here, but it's best to let it soak in water for an hour. So I'm going to let it do that while I get started on the trellis staking. Maybe this is foldable because you're supposed to use it like this. I don't know. I don't know, but we're gonna try our best. So I'm gonna put this in water, let it sit for an hour, and meanwhile, we're gonna be working on this. This is the Monstera that I am going to use the trellis for. And I'm gonna have to put it this way, which is kind of ugly so that it doesn't like fold. The thing is that it kind of needs to be in the center of the pot, so I'm going to have to repot this to get it to work. There's a lot of mosquitoes out right now. I'm getting attacked. 
I guess it'll be good to look at the roots too since I've had them for only like a month. I don't really know how the roots are doing. It's been growing, but you can see like there's a yellowing leaf here and it obviously didn't look the healthiest when it came to me. So we're gonna see right now. So I have a clean cat litter box, which is the perfect container to repot a really large plant. And I'm gonna pull it out. So all the roots are coming out of the bottom. They kind of look, I don't know how they're looking. They look healthy, but they could possibly not be. These are the roots. It's got some healthy ones, but a lot of them are rotted. This, all of these dark brown, these are all rotten roots. So I think I'm gonna take off as much soil as I can and then remove a lot of the rotted roots. Cause there are definitely so many rotten ones, but there's also a lot of healthy ones. I was originally gonna put the uh, trellis on this one, but I am being eaten alive by so many mosquitoes. So we're gonna go with the easy, <laughs> with the easy one, which is the moss pole. So I'm gonna put that in, and it's literally just tying it up. I have to make a new soil mix because, as you saw, I just washed away all the other soil. It has a bunch of fresh roots, and it's kind of intense for the plant but that's also what i did for this monster here and as you can see it's thriving so i think in the end it'll be a really good thing i emptied out the uh <laughs> litter box in my compost so now i can make a new soil mix which i'm just going to be using cactus mix and then mixing in orchid bark charcoal and pumice here i'm using unigrow cactus mix I haven't really used this mix before, but we had a lot of it. And I used the other half, Fox Farm Rainforest of the Sea. I added in charcoal and medium sized orchid bark for the drainage, and I just mixed that up. The reason that I used the Fox Farm is because that's kind of a really water retentive mixture, and I just wanted to add that in with the cactus mix because I don't know how fast that cactus mix drains out but I saw there was a lot of pumice in it. It's just gonna balance out the mix really nicely and they're gonna work well together for this beautiful monstera to keep growing its nice little roots and to prevent any more root rot from happening. Here's what it's looking like at the moment. You can see I set up both of the vines to face for the area roots to come this way. So when this one grows, I could slowly attach it over here. And this one, I can pretty much attach right now, just like this. And as this new leaf comes out right here, 
that's gonna have a node an aerial root that's gonna hopefully be able to go in here and I'm just gonna tie them up right now So here is the final product. I know it's not the best looking, but I have it set up so that as this new leaf comes out, it's gonna be against the pole. And then this leaf right here, that's gonna come out. I have that set up for it to continue to grow this way towards the pole. I could set this up in the sun for all the leaves to kind of face the same way and to look more presentable kind of like how this one's a little more presentable it's still a little bit crazy because i haven't really gotten the sun angle right yet but i'm feeling pretty pretty hopeful about this it's getting kind of dark outside and i have been absolutely mauled by mosquitoes i specifically wore long pants so they wouldn't bite me because they usually get my legs but they went for the arms this time <laughs> so Time for me to go inside and I'll probably stick the other Monstera up tomorrow inside my house. Maybe they're really big though, so I think I'm gonna do it outside and just take the L again. But I have faith. I think it's gonna look really good. I think it's gonna look really good when it's all when all the leaves are kind of aligned. <laughs> but yeah, okay, so we'll do the trellis tomorrow. So it's been over a week since I potted up this guy. He's looking crazy still. Honestly, if anything, some of its leaves got a little sunburned because I moved it. And this is the next one that we got to do with the trellis. I went out and I bought a pot that would fit the trellis in it because the one it already has right now, it doesn't fit in. And this was kind of expensive. This was like $20. Oh, it says it has knockout holes on it. I was about to go drilling. I brought my drill and everything, but this is a lot better. So this is where I noticed that it says it has knockout holes. And here they are. You just gotta punch it out. Okay. This is the guy we're focusing on today. He's got a little friend right now. Um, I think I'm gonna have to move him because I know praying mantises are good, but they still, I just don't like bugs, but it's on a new leaf that came out. So there's actually three vines in this one and that's the newest leaf, <laughs> the newest leaf on the smallest vine. So it's looking good and I just need to repot it I don't really want to go through with the entire like soil removing process, mostly because I don't really want to make a new soil. Um, so we'll see how the roots look. Hopefully they look good. And I'm gonna go and get my cat trade now. This one has the same problem as the other one with the rotted roots. Um, you can see there's fresh growth though. Those really white parts look good. It's just these rotted parts that gotta go. So I guess I will be replacing the soil. It's very nice to look at like the new soil that I have in my freshly repotted monster compared to like this soil with barely any drainage stuff and I saw some bugs at the bottom that I want to get rid of but there's also a worm that I'm gonna try to keep oh there are the bugs they're like centipedes or something I don't know but I don't like them so I'm gonna hose this down probably I found that hosing down is the least invasive way to get the dirt off of the roots. I feel like I'm not breaking as many roots and I know some people do like root trimming but I have never tried it before and my 
my goal is to break as little roots as possible. This is the dirt that I took off. I didn't take off as much as last time when I took off the soil. Last time I removed it all, but this time I just removed like the outer edges so that the roots would grow into the new soil medium. This isn't looking too good. There's a lot of new growth. Like all this white, like this really nice white is new growth. So it seems to be fine. Like my first soil mix, I used the exact same Unigrow cactus mix and I didn't have any medium grade orchid bark so I ended up having to use my fine grade orchid bark which I would have much rather preferred to use the medium grade but I ran out. And I also ran out of Rainforest of the Sea so I didn't add as much charcoal and orchid bark as I did last time because I didn't want to add as much drainage since I didn't have a really water retentive soil to kind of balance that out. When I add in a stake to my plants, I like to start by adding soil around the stake so that I can make sure it's standing straight up. And then from there, I can add the soil around the roots, but I find it's easier to get the stake positioned how you want it first and let the soil hold that up before you go and get all crazy with the roots of the plant. We finish it off with a nice watering to make sure that there are no air pockets in the soil and everything is all compact and nicely settled together. Here's the final result. Well, actually I need to stake it or tie it up, but I think even without tying up, it already looks really good. I don't know if that's just me, but to me it looks really good. And I feel like it's all because of this one leaf though. Like if that leaf wasn't there, I feel like it would look really messy. So I'm gonna tie it up and then it will be the final. I'm kinda getting ahead of myself because it looks so good. Well, it only needed that one little tie to get this part up and that, that was it. This was a lot easier to tie it up onto the trellis because there's something for it to hold on to, whereas on the moss pole it could easily slide down. But yeah, that was so easy. I really love how it looks. Like it looks like so good already and the leaves aren't even all together, but I feel like I said this one leaf is bringing it all together. But oh my gosh, so far I love the trellis. I prefer the trellis and it's still got a lot, a lot of space to grow up. Wow, 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 wow. And hopefully, of course, the sun will, you know, bring it all, bring all the leaves together again. So that is it for today's video. I'm going to have the moss pole and if I can find it, I'll put the trellis from Lowe's linked down below as well. I honestly really love the trellis look and I don't know if it's because I kept seeing it in stores or whatever but as soon as I put it in I was like oh that looks so good and I expected it to be a lot harder to put in than the moss pole but the moss pole was a lot more difficult it turns out. <laughs> I think the moss pole is more of if you keep your monstera indoors because when you put it outside it does get like crazy strong because it goes through wind and just crazy lighting whereas indoors it's more of a you know a safer environment like you put a tree without wind and it's not going to be strong it's going to fall some there's a there's a saying like that or something so yeah i think it's just a moss pole like that one should just be for more of an indoors monstera even though i already potted that one i don't know where my friend's gonna put it um, but as you saw on my outdoor one, it bent the metal and hopefully the wood on the trellis holds out. I just love it so much. It just looks really good. Moss pull for less strong plants, maybe like a good philodendron or a pothos. It would look really nice. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next one. Bye!